The health benefits of probiotic supplements and foods have been well documented, including a lower risk of infections, improved digestion and even a reduced risk for some chronic diseases. While there are many health benefits linked to taking probiotics, there can also be side effects. Most of these are minor and only affect a small percentage of the population. Side effect number one, they may cause unpleasant digestive symptoms. While most people do not experience side effects, the most commonly reported reaction to bacteria-based probiotic supplements is a temporary increase in gas and bloating. Those taking yeast-based probiotics may experience constipation and increased thirst. It is not known exactly why some people experience these side effects, but they typically subside after a few weeks of continued use. To reduce the likelihood of side effects, start with a low dose of probiotics and slowly increase to the full dosage over a few weeks. This can help your body adjust to them. Side effects number two, amines in probiotic foods may trigger headaches. Some probiotic rich foods, like yogurt, sauerkraut and kimchi, contain biogenic amines. Biogenic amines are substances that form when protein containing foods age or are fermented by bacteria. The most common amines found in probiotic rich foods include histamine, tyramine, tryptamine and phenylethylamine. Amines can excite the central nervous system, increase or decrease blood flow and may trigger headaches in people sensitive to the substance. Keeping a food diary including any headache symptoms you might experience can help clarify whether fermented foods are problematic for you. If probiotic rich foods trigger your symptoms, a probiotic supplement may be a better choice. Side effect number three, some strains can increase histamine levels. Some bacterial strains used in probiotic supplements can produce histamine inside the digestive tract of humans. Histamine is a molecule that is normally produced by your immune system when it detects a threat. When histamine levels rise, blood vessels dilate to bring more blood to the affected area. The vessels also become more permeable so that immune cells can easily get into the relevant tissue to combat any pathogens. This process creates redness and swelling in the affected area, and can also trigger allergy symptoms such as itching, watery eyes, runny nose or trouble breathing. Normally, histamine that is produced in your digestive tract is naturally degraded by an enzyme called diamine oxidase. This enzyme inhibits histamine levels from rising enough to cause symptoms. However, some people with histamine intolerance have trouble properly breaking down the histamine in their bodies, seeing as they do not produce enough diamine oxidase. Side effect number four, some ingredients may cause adverse reactions. People with allergies or intolerances should read the labels of probiotic supplements carefully, since they might contain ingredients they could react to. For example, some of the supplements contain allergens such as dairy, egg or soy. These ingredients should be avoided by anyone who is allergic, as they may trigger an allergic reaction. If necessary, read labels carefully to avoid these ingredients. Similarly, yeast-based probiotics should not be taken by those with yeast allergies. Instead, a bacteria-based probiotic should be used. Milk sugar, or lactose, is also used in many probiotic supplements. While studies suggest that most people with lactose intolerance can tolerate up to 400 mg of lactose in medications or supplements, there have been case reports of adverse effects from probiotics. Since a small number of people with lactose intolerance may experience unpleasant gas and bloating when consuming lactose-containing probiotics, they may want to choose lactose-free products. Side effect number five, they can increase infection risk for some. Probiotics are safe for the vast majority of the population, but may not be the best fit for everyone. In rare cases, the bacteria or yeasts found in probiotics can enter the bloodstream and cause infections in susceptible individuals. Those at greatest risk for infection from probiotics include people with suppressed immune systems, prolonged hospitalizations, venous catheters, or those who have undergone recent surgeries. However, the risk of developing an infection is very low, and no serious infections have been reported in clinical studies of the general population. It is estimated that only about 1 in 1 million people who take probiotics containing lactobacilli bacteria will develop an infection. The risk is even smaller for yeast-based probiotics, with only about 1 in 5.6 million users getting infected. Overall, probiotics are a beneficial addition to most people's diet or supplement regimen, with relatively few and unlikely side effects. Now, for the probiotics I use and recommend check out the first link in the description below this video. Thanks for watching and make sure to watch the next videos with health tips which should show up right about now.